Miss Winters. Mr. Collins said he didn't want to be disturbed. Now, please tell him I'm here and want to see him. He's got some calls to if make. If you don't knock on that door, I will. Mr. Malloy, do you know a man called Sam Evans? What about him? Well, I was just wondering what kind of a man he was. I think I might learn the answer to that one tonight. Why do you ask? Well, I suppose it's silly, but... Hello, Roger. I've been trying to reach you, Malloy. Well, I'm here with a special invitation just for you. Yes, I know about your invitations. Now get inside. I think that might be a good idea. I want to know who you think you are arranging meetings between yourself and Devlin. So you know about it, do you? You bet I do. Burke called me, wanted to be sure I'd be here. And you will. 11 o'clock tonight, your office. Who the devil do you think you are? What gives you the right to walk in here and order calm me about? Calm down, Roger. Just calm down. I'm going to get you fired, so help me. Maybe. But before that happens, Roger, you, me, Burke, and Sam Evans are going to have this out. Sam Evans? Is he coming there, too? Yes. I believe you've lost your mind. I really believe you've lost your mind. Like you did ten years ago when you let Burke be convicted of manslaughter? He was guilty and you know it. Sure he was. That's what you told the jury from the witness stand. But you know, and I know, and Sam Evans knows it wasn't true. Evans is an idiot and knows nothing. Uh, Roger, I'm through arguing with you. I came to tell you to be in your office tonight. But it's ridiculous to ask Evans. Come off it, Roger! Roger. It's the end of the road, and you know it. What are you trying to do to me? Are you trying to destroy me? Destroy me. That's what Sam said. The same words. But it was ten years ago. It's over now. Not for Burke, it isn't. All right, all right. So he went to prison, but he's out. And he's a rich man. And he hasn't lost anything by it. Bill. If you have any feeling for me or for my family... Don't you throw that at me, Roger. I'm warning you. You think it's easy for me to do this? Well, let me tell you something. I went through hell before I made this decision. Hell, Roger. And now it's made. We're going to have this meeting. But what good will it do? It'll clear up a crime. That's what it'll do. It'll keep Bear from eating away at the rest of your family. And I'm it'll... to be the sacrifice, is that it? It's you or the family, Roger. That's where I had to choose. Well, I'm not about to sit around and let... Burke, make your sister pay for something you did to him. Evans will never show up. Yes, he will. I promise you that. He has nothing to say. Yes, he does. I promise you that, too. My sister will never forgive you. Maybe not. Look, Roger, it still doesn't have to be this way. Call the police, tell them the truth, and then we won't have to have the meeting. And that's how you keep your hands clean, is that it? All right. It's about 10 o'clock. I'm going straight home. You'll leave here about 10 to 11 to beat your office on time. So that gives you about 50, 50 minutes. For what? 50 minutes, Roger, to decide whether or not you're going to call the police. Now, if you do, phone me at home and let me know, and I'll cancel the meeting. But if you don't, you better show up at your office at 11 o'clock. I'm sorry, I can't talk anymore. 
You seem to be making a habit of walking in on telephone conversations. I'm sorry, but I have to talk to you about something. I really haven't time to discuss anything more with you. It's about Mr. Evans. Evans? Yes. Do you remember the day after I came here, I, I said I met a strange man on the edge of the cliff. He seemed very anxious to get in touch with you. He said his name was Sam and that he was looking for you. Yes, I remember. What about it? Well, he seemed very frightening and strange. Was that man Sam Evans? Well, I can't see what difference it makes, whether he was or not. Because you said you hardly knew him. But what if I did? Well, you also seemed very anxious that I shouldn't meet him again. Because I was trying to keep you from being involved with a drunken fool who might... Who might what? Tell me something about myself? Miss Winters, I have no idea what you're talking about. My past. Me. Who I am. Where I came from before I was left in that foundling home. Is that what you're afraid of, that Mr. Evans can tell me these things? <laughs> it's not supposed to be funny. <laughs> oh, but it is. You, you don't really know quite how funny you are. <laughs> Suppose you just answer my question. Miss Winters, I haven't got time for any more of this nonsense. I have a very important meeting. I in just, just want to minutes. know if Mr. Evans knows something about my past or not. As far as I'm concerned, Sam Evans' knowledge is as deep as the bottom of a bottle. Now, why don't you go upstairs and leave me alone? I intend to talk to him, Mr. Collins. I just want you to know that. Her past. Welcome to the club, Sam. Who is it? Glad to see you can make it on time. Have a chip. I'd rather stand. The rest of the group will be here pretty soon. Why are you so nervous, Sam? Huh? Oh, it's nothing. I... I'm just a little restless. Well, if you'd only sit down... You... I... Well, Mr. Collins, this is a surprise. I had no idea you would show up. Where's Malloy? Hasn't he gotten here yet? No, uh, Burke was here when I arrived. But don't be impatient, Roger. Yes. It's only two minutes uh, after 11. He'll, he'll be here soon. After all, I've been waiting here 10 years for this. I can certainly wait a few more minutes. concert, Mother? Oh, Carolyn, you startled me. The neighbors have been complaining for hours. Go on, play some more. Well, what about Uncle Roger and David? I don't want to disturb them. <laughs> I was only kidding. I couldn't hear them until I got just outside the door. Go on. I love to listen to you. I always have. Yeah, I think it's probably too late. It's only ten past eleven. Not even the witching hour. The witching hour? Oh, Carolyn, sometimes I, I think I'm losing my mind. What's the matter? I'm frightened. Of what? 
I don't know, but I have this awful feeling of impending disaster. Anyway. Mother, you don't usually make telephone calls at 20 minutes after 11. I, I, I wanted to discuss a business matter with me. Does Bill have anything to do with your premonition? Oh, forget what I said before. It was, it was silly of me. Are you afraid something might have happened to him? Well, of course not. Why do you ask that? Because he seemed pretty upset today. Because he came up here and had a private talk with you. And because when he walked out of here, he didn't seem like a very happy man. Bill Malloy is our fleet manager. Why shouldn't we have a private talk? Why shouldn't you be able to sleep tonight? Darling, Bill and I discussed things relating to the business, and they were disturbing. Nothing that need concern you. But it can't wait until morning. Oh, Carolyn, please. Well, just answer one question. Does it have anything to do with Uncle Roger? Why do you ask that? It is Uncle Roger, isn't it? We had a terrible row earlier this evening. Did you know that? What about? Something silly. A pen. A pen? Yes. Mother, you know how fond of Uncle Roger I am, but tonight he... I, I don't know. I guess that's why I couldn't sleep, thinking about the strange way he behaved. In what way? That is what you and Bill were talking about, isn't it? Uncle Roger. What do you mean, strange? Well, I don't know. There was this pen business. And then later we were talking about the family. You know, about the different things that had been done way back to keep the family together. And Uncle Roger said something about self-protection. About how sometimes a person has to do terrible things to protect himself. He said that. Mm -hmm. Uncle Roger used those words? Well, words like that. And then later he said, and I can even remember his exact words, I refuse to be anyone's sacrificial lamb. Mother, where are you going? Upstairs to talk to Uncle Roger. Still no answer? No. Well, let it ring. Why? Malloy obviously is not home. He has a housekeeper, doesn't he? At least she should answer it. Let it ring. Are you sure he said he'd be here at 11? That's what he said. Be here at 11 sharp. Isn't that what he said to you, Roger? Well, I suppose he changed his mind. This is a waste of time. He's obviously not there. Look, it's 11.30. If he were going to be here, he would have been here half an hour ago, so... Let's just forget about the whole thing. Stick around, Sam. Malloy set up this meeting. And he told us to be here. Well, we're here. And we're staying here until he gets here. Unless you want to get into the matter right now. I don't know what he wanted. I see. What about you, Roger? Bill came to my house and asked me to come down here. That's all I know. <laughs> You're a great pair, aren't you? Well, let me tell you what I know. Malloy said he had some information concerning my manslaughter conviction. Oh, come off it now, will you? Who do you think you're talking to? Well, now, if you're going to be obnoxious... Obnoxious! Thing. Look, we've been sitting around here for half an hour talking about the weather and the price of sardines. Well, let's stop sitting around and get down to facts. What facts? Ten years ago, you were a witness at my murder trial. But you knew I was innocent, didn't you? That's not true. And you, Sam? 
You know something about it, too, don't you? Sorry, Burke, you're, uh, you're wrong. Am I? Bill Malloy wouldn't have asked you over here if he didn't think you were involved. Evans wasn't even at your trial. How could he be involved? I don't know. Suppose you tell me. There's nothing to tell. Well, you're wasting your time, Burke. He didn't answer a couple of minutes ago. Why should he be home now? All right. All right. But if either of you are gone, when I get back here, so help me, I'm coming after you and drag you back. Where are you going? To Bill Malloy's house. I'm going to get him up if I have to break the door down. And remember, be here when I get back. <laughs> Uncle Roger said anything about going out. Why? Isn't he upstairs? No. Oh, now, Mother, don't start reading anything into that. Uncle Roger could have gone into town for any one of a dozen reasons. I know. I made some tea while you were upstairs. I don't think I care for any thank you. Well, then, how about sitting down at the piano and knocking off a chorus of Home on the Range? Mother, anything's better than standing there wringing your hands because of some ridiculous premonition. Carolyn, why don't you go back upstairs to bed? Because I made this tea and I'm going to drink it. Mother, tell me something. What did Uncle Roger mean by sacrificial lamb? I don't know. Oh, it seems so cold in here. The chill of doom, of course. Carolyn, don't say that. I was only joking. Well, please don't. I think you better go out, back up to bed. Mother, I'm sorry. It wasn't a very good joke. Carolyn, I'm so worried. You have no idea how worried I am. About what? Oh, I wish I knew. It happened once a long, long time ago. This fear and... Mother, I love you. And I want to help if there's anything I can do. Darling, for your own happiness, you can walk out that front door and never look back. That's what you can do for me. I don't want to, Mother. Oh, Carolyn, why do I feel this way? It's as if death had walked into this house. Mother, that's silly, and you know it. Did you hear a car pull up? No. Well, I'm sure I... Nothing. Please, please don't do this to yourself. Where could Roger have gone? I'm sure nothing has happened to him, if that's what you're worried about. The altar. Perhaps the lamb has gone to the sacrificial altar. Absolutely not. I have no intention of playing into Burke's hands, not for a second. It's ridiculous. Why should we sit here and wait? Burke will come back. I don't want him to think that you have any reason to be afraid of him. You'll wait here just as I will, and you'll face him just as I will. But there's no point in it. You'll find that uh, Bill's not at home. How do you know that? Well, because I... Because I know Bill. If he were at home, he'd answer the phone. Is that the only reason? Well, of course. I mean, look. His phone is right in the bedroom. If he were there, he couldn't have helped hearing it. 